In this video I'm going to look at the ideal gas equation. Before I look at the ideal gas equation I just want to explain why we use it and how it's different to the questions that we've done so far that say at RTP in them room temperature and pressure and we've therefore used the molar gas volume of 24 dm cubed. And you can see in black there I've said RTP is about 20 degrees C. It's about 101 kilopascals. In other words, it's not that accurate. So what if the temperature was 18 degrees C in the, in the lab that you were doing the experiment? What if the pressure was slightly higher than 101 kilopascals? Obviously the volume is going to change and therefore we need a more accurate equation. So that's why we use the ideal gas equation. So there it is, nice and easy to remember, PV equals NRT. Um, the only tricky part for this is remembering the units. So I'm going to take a little bit of time going through each term and explaining what the units are and how you convert into those units from the units that are typically given in questions. So the P term obviously stands for pressure, but in the ideal gas equation, pressure must be in pascals. Typically, they'll give you a pressure in kilopascals. So there's an example on the board. 100 kilopascals is 100,000 pascals. It's also worth making the point that one atmosphere in pressure is 101 kilopascals. The V stands for volume, but that must be in cubic metres. So typically you'd be given a volume in decimeters cubed. So there's an example for you. 24 decimeters cubed is 24 divided by a thousand cubic meters. All I do is just put times 10 to the minus three on whatever the volume in decimeters cubed is. So 24 dm cubed would be 24 times 10 to the minus three meters cubed. If they give you the volume in centimetres cubed, you can see the conversion slightly different. It's now 10 to the minus 6. So effectively you're dividing by a million. So 24 cm cubed is 24 times 10 to the minus 6 metres cubed. I better just spend a minute explaining the conversions for you. So you can see on the board there, 1 cubic metre is equivalent to, or the same as, 1,000 cubic decimeters. So therefore, one cubic decimeter will be one over a thousand cubic meters. So that's where that conversion comes from. So whatever you've got in decimeters cubed, you divide by a thousand to get it into cubic meters. And the way I do that is I just put a 10 to the minus 3 after whatever the cubic decimeters is. So 24 dm cubed is 24. Now the conversion times 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters. And I've done exactly the same, but now for cubic centimeters. So one cubic meter is actually equivalent to 1 million cubic centimeters. So one cubic centimetre is obviously a lot smaller than a cubic metre. It's a millionth of a cubic metre. So one divided by a million. So therefore 24 centimetres cubed is 24 divided by a million cubic metres. And again, I just put the 10 to the minus 6 to get it into cubic metres. Easy one now. N stands for the number of moles, and that's basically just a number. But just beware, they might give you some mass information. So it might be a mass of a certain chemical, and you've got to convert that to moles by dividing by the MR. R is the gas constant, so that has a fixed value of 8.314 joules per kelvin per mole. And finally, the T term. So T stands for temperature, and that's measured in Kelvin. And you can see in the units of the gas constant, we've got K there per Kelvin. 
So temperature's got to be in Kelvin. So typically if they give you a temperature in degrees Celsius, so I've gone for 25 degrees C, how do you convert to Kelvin? You add 273 on, so 25 Celsius is actually 298 degrees Kelvin. So we'll start with this question where we need to calculate the temperature at which one mole of an ideal gas will occupy 24 cubic decimeters at a pressure of one atmosphere. And I'll just stipulate that the temperature is going to be quoted in degrees C. So we're going to get an extra conversion in there. So obviously we're going to start with the ideal gas equation itself. PV equals NRT. And then we need to rearrange for the term that we want. And it's the temperature term, the T. So we need to rearrange this for T. So that becomes T equals PV over NR. So you can see I've put all the numbers in there. I've just written up the side there this reminder that one atmosphere, which the pressure was given in, one atmosphere is 101 kilopascals. But remember, we've got to use pascals in the ideal gas equation. So there's the pressure term there, 101,000 pascals, multiplied by the volume, which is 24 decimeters cubed. So there it is there with its conversion so that it's now in meters cubed, divided by the number of moles, um, one mole, so one there, and the ideal gas constant is 8.314. So remember our temperature is going to come out in Kelvin. So there's the calculator value, 291.556. So I've rounded that to 292 degrees Kelvin, but we wanted it in degrees Celsius. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to take off 273, and that's going to give us a temperature of 19. So we've done all this talk about ideal gases, we've done the calculations, but what is an ideal gas? And there's the four conditions for an ideal gas. They must have random motion of their particles. The collisions between the particles are completely elastic. The particles have negligible size and the particles have no intermolecular forces acting between them.